Today I will be doing an unboxing and testing of two lights that were sent to me by UAF. They did not tell me what to say, they just sent them to me for free. So this is the first of the two lights they sent me, the GL-102. Box comes with a power cord, mine was a US type. The uh, hanging hardware and a spare fuse. So, on to the actual light. Here it is. It's got these um, plastic conical reflectors um, and a plexiglass cover. The actual body is aluminum. It's actively cooled and it's got these the dimmer switch and the veg and bloom switches on the back which I'll cover in more detail in a little bit. And some um, instructions. On to the second light they sent me. The GLA002. Let's get it open here. There it is. This also has a plexiglass cover, but it is a plastic body. It is also actively cooled. You can see the fan cutouts there. They also included a instruction manual and I will soon have a close-up picture of that so you can pause and take a look if you want to. Here are the features of the GLA002. This is the manual. Just pause here if you want to read. The uh, light came with only one carabiner, which is pretty annoying. I had to switch to two, as you can see here, which gives it a lot more stability. Um, it's got a on-off switch right at the power plug input. And the cable that it comes with is pretty short in my opinion, so expect to use an extension cord. It also has this little port here that allows you to daisy chain the lights together. My version did not have um, these buttons cut out, so I cannot toggle bloom mode. Here's the uh, actual testing data that I collected. The temperature of the back is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature of the LED panel itself is about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So I measured the actual power draw at the wall and I got 159, 160 watts. Okay, so next I'm going to measure the PFD values. So I took a 2 foot by 2 foot area, put up reflective walls, and took 16 readings, which you can see here. Now, something to keep in mind with these readings, um, a vegetative growth, you should target around 200 to 500, and flowering growth around 400 to 800. So this will do a decent job um, at, with vegetative plants. Uh, and I would say it would be on the low end for flowering or fruiting plants. So with a hanging height of 18 inches and a coverage area of 2 by 2 feet, I got a total PPF of 175, 
and power draw of 159 gives me an efficiency measured in PPF per watt of 1.1. This is somewhat low, um, not too low, but pretty low. There's definitely better lights out there. So um, with that in mind, I would recommend this light um, for vegetative growth if you are on a budget. Now on to the GL102, the other light that they sent me. Here is the manual. Pause here if you want to read it. Um, this one also included only one bracket, um, but I am hanging it here with two to be easy. It also included a short cable. Um, it did, however, get a QC Pass sticker, so that's nice. And it also has the same daisy chain capabilities, which you can plug in your cable here to extend. In terms of switches, this does have a dimmable switch, which is pretty cool. It also has a toggle between bloom and veg LEDs. And if you leave the toggle in the middle, it'll keep them both on, which is what I'll use for my tests. And it has the ability to automatically turn the light on and off based on a timer. Um, I think it's a 12-hour timer, but you can read more about that in the description. Here's a look at um, what the light looks like as you switch between bloom and veg mode and all on. I did realize after turning this light upside down that this knob here is not attached at all and it can fall straight off. Okay, so on to the testing of this light. The temperature reading of the back panel is about 79 degrees Fahrenheit. And the LED panel itself is about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Taking a power reading, I'm getting 37, 38 watts at the wall. Okay, and on to the par value testing. Again, 2 by 2 area with reflective walls with 16 readings. And this is the readings that I am getting. So, um, these are all pretty low. Uh, in fact, under the recommended value for vegetative growth. Um, this also gives me a PPF per watt of 0 0.99, which is pretty poor. So I do not recommend this light for anything other than seedlings. And I'm a little surprised that they have the veg and bloom switches because I would not use this light for either vegetative or bloom growth. Um, this is a cheap light, so it might be okay if you have one for um, seedlings only. Okay, that wraps up my review of the two lights. Thanks for watching. Cheers.